Join the United West team as we visit the Starot Israel Police Station Bomb Squad Unit as they teach us about the rockets being fired from the Gaza Strip into Israel. We're at the police station in Sidorot, and uh, within sight, literally, of Gaza, which is where these things are fired from. 10,000 or so have been fired at Israel out of Gaza since 2005 when Israel withdrew from Gaza. Walk us through a, um, a launch sequence and then what immediately happens and what takes good, place. Good question. What, what happens in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a missile launch, we identify that there's been a launch, a, a Qassam or a grad launch. From there the siren goes off automatically, okay? People have then 15 seconds to get to a safe place or a bomb shelter. 15 seconds. I want to do something with all of you now. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, prepare yourself. In four seconds, all walk towards that wall. Walk, don't run. From now. One, two, three, four, five, six, come back. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That's oh. it. Boom. That's still impact, right? That's impact. 15 seconds. Does that answer your question, Tom? Okay, now it hits. Now what? Now it hits. Yes, Bia. Ma tafkid. Ma asim. Ma nachnu ki anche miktsu ata. At ma tau se. There's two things that happen. One, or it blows up. Okay. Or? Yeah. Or she doesn't blow up. Or it doesn't blow up. Sometimes they don't. Blow. Okay. If, if it does blow, the first the first and foremost thing is to take care of the injured and then make the area sterile. You make the area sterile after the injured. The police are doing this. The police. The police. The police. The police. No. The, the police will first get the injured and clear the area. Okay. Then... Then the bomb squad comes in. The police, I can tell you as a former police officer, will not go near this. We will not let civilians go near. The only people who will go near are the bomb squad. Um, and then we will, he will take it, he will identify what it is, and only he will take it away. No one else will touch it, no one will take it away, and then I'll learn what it's all about. And if it's not blown up? If it's not blown up, that's the problem. If it doesn't blow up, our bomb squad will take care of the, uh, the missile from a distance. They won't come close to it, it'll be from a distance. Either with a, a special tractor or the bomb squad robot, which you saw in Netanya yesterday. We need more robots in Israel, by the way. People who follow the United West, we need more robots in Israel. The bomb squad try, try and take, they will take the, the, the missile away to an open area and they will blow it up. And then they will learn, obviously, about it. At the same time, the, the, what is the IDF doing in conjunction with the operations here? Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a very good uh, cooperation with the IDF. What, what are they doing? I mean, do, do they 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 identify the spot? Do they attack? Do they, what are they doing? Ah. He doesn't know what they do. He takes care of his bomb. Well, it's a good thing. It's the police. The police take care of. He knows. If the police take care of what happens in Israel, the IDF take care of what happens out of Israel. What do you think they do? I mean, what? What? I would. I would hope that they would try and stop the before the launch. They will stop it to prevent and be proactive. But a couple were fired the other day. There were eight 
כשמונה, נמצאו שניים, עוד שישה בשטח. They were eight uh, 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 blasts this weekend, eight Kassams came, or... Kassams, what? Kassam. Kassam, eight Kassam missiles came through this weekend, okay? Yeah, this last weekend, a couple of days ago, uh, two were actually found, the other six were, are lying in an open area somewhere that they can't find or can't get to because of all different reasons. It's, um, it's got to be public record. Was there any return fire? Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. There wasn't. He doesn't know. I didn't see it reported. We do. It is open. If we return fire, you will know about it. And again, we're, we're defending ourselves. You know, it's, 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 we return fire in order to take out the terror cell that's firing the missiles. It's not to shoot somebody in the house, as the media says. The method is to get some... A hospital or a house where there's full of people and put their kids on the roof, put the, the launches, the rocket launches on the side of the building. Correct me if I'm wrong. And they will, they will put it on the side, they will fire. Because they know we will return fire. We, we don't know if it's a school or a hospital. You can't see from our uh, blimps that you saw there. Uh, if it's a school or hospital, we, we have no clue. But we try and hit that group. So if you see, a, if I see a tripod <coughs> with a launch pad here, and they're about to launch, we will try and stop them from launching. It's our right to defend ourselves. <laughs> they, they, the distance is also uh, done by the tail of the of the, the the missile. So this is a grid. Let's go and see a better one. This is a grid. So you see they they've. This can get to Ashdod. Okay? It's heavy. It's about 100 miles, you said? 40, 40 kilometers. 25 miles. What's the most difficult thing you have here that you can hold? It's hard. 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 You've got the PLO. You've got Hamas. You've got the Islamic Jihad. You've got the front, uh, George Chabas front, uh, uh, People's Front for the Liberation of Democratic Terrorists, uh, whatever. <laughs> the people who are in charge of all this is the World Jihad. That is still, as far as the bomb squad is concerned, the umbrella. זה מה שנורא עד היום לעבר מדינת ישראל. היום אנחנו יודעים שהם למעשה השתדרגו, נוצרו אמל"ח טוב יותר. Today, today, as we stand here today, we know that they have much more modern, more lethal, more, they can get to more distances. הם יצרו רקטות שיכולות להגיע לטווחים רחוקים יותר. More. Rockets can get, easily get to 40 and more kilometers today. That means effectively Tel Aviv area. They're receiving still today lots of money from different countries. Uh, he can't go into that and I will, okay, because of uh, but they, we all know that, what, where they're receiving money from. Uh, the ammunition that they're receiving is coming in from the, from the tunnels. Yes, there are how many minerals? I don't know. There are There's a lot of tunnels. Okay? A lot. Right, right now we know that the Hamas and all the terror organizations in Gaza are planning and preparing to attack us. We are planning to defend ourselves. And as, as he said in Hebrew, and if I translate directly, we're preparing, we know what the threat is, and we're preparing. So Zderot is going to be again on the front line. On the other hand, they are, getting, they are receiving through all different clandestine methods, the tunnels, the, mostly the tunnels, they're receiving missiles that come from other countries. Okay. It's coming from other countries. Which country? He said he doesn't want to talk about it right now. Most of them are coming through, either through the, the ocean or underground tunnels. This is, this is coming from factories, okay? The, the, this is the part that's coming, what, what they call in Hebrew, which is coming from 
arms making factories in different countries, modern countries that are making these weapons. שכמובן הטווחים שלהם זה נורא לטווחים ארוכים יותר, הכמות חומר נפץ גדולה יותר. Next we learn about bomb shelters in Starod. These bomb shelters are needed to protect the citizens of Starod from the thousands of rockets Hamas is launching from the Gaza Strip. Converted into a bomb shelter in order to protect us, protect the citizens of Starod and the people that are visiting here. Um, it's a necessity. We, we have to have these in Starod to protect life. You gotta go in there and check that out. If you look, if you listen carefully, if you're waiting for a bus in a normal country, the bus seat or the chair is facing the road, correct? Yeah, the, ch the seat is behind. Okay, and why is that? Because if somebody's sitting waiting for a bus, it may take a while, they protect it at least until they can get in to the shelter. So th this is another form of, you know, forward thinking. What, what we have here is when Israel was built, when Sderot was built, okay, um, in, in the 1950s, there was no necessity for, for, for bomb shelters for everything. You'd have a bomb shelter, every neighborhood would have one bomb shelter. Remember Israel's since 1948 been fighting wars and we've had to have uh, bomb shelters in our communities for many, many years. In fact, since the you know, establishment of the State of Israel. But what happened here is because of the, the thousands and thousands of bomb shelters that have come in, is that the old buildings and the older houses and the old apartments never had bomb shelters. They had to run, okay, to the, the public bomb shelter in case of an air raid. Now, because the Qassams and the 15 second time that you have, you have 15 seconds to get, you can't now leave your building and run to the public bomb shelter, which may be 50 seconds down the road, which is bombproof. It's bulletproof and bombproof. So any shrapnel that hits or a direct hit wouldn't really affect it. You know, so that, that this is open so you can get some light if you need, and it's on the outside if you notice. And because the bomb shelters in Israel, not only are thick reinforced, we're not talking about the bus stop, but in your homes, they're also designed today to stop against chemical, biological attacks. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, this, this thing is uh, $100,000 minimally. Who's paying for this? The government. The government of Israel has to pay for this. This is not, we are not asking the homeowners, the government of Israel is not asking the homeowners to pay for this. The government has put it in because you have to have it.